So I would like to have a quick review for uh, Fourier series which should be useful for any calculations in this course. So I mean, if you remember uh, all waveforms no matter you know what you draw on the paper or observe in the universe so they actually can be represented as some of you know simple sinusoids at different frequencies and basically Fourier series is just you know a matter of uh, getting those frequency components in that waveforms. So if you let me show you the animated version so if you look at uh, that figure you know the first one is actually how you can represent a square wave if you just use a fundamental component so it is just a sinusoid you know going up and in the second one on top of the fundamental component you can add a third component of that one so there's basically two circles rotating at uh, different frequencies and it's you know getting closer to the square waveform and in the next one the blue one uh, shows the uh, waveform with uh, the fifth component added so basically there are you know three circles running around and you can see how quickly they can go up or down and in the last one basically you know that is with the seventh component so there are like four circles running at different frequencies and when it's going up and down basically the magnitudes of all those things are you know uh, being in phase and it just quickly becoming from positive to negative and waiting and going negative to positive of course if you add multiple uh, harmonics you will get closer and closer uh, to the square waveform and actually I, if you just want to get some a couple of visualizations I strongly advise you to click you know on the video links and other uh, websites I put on the presentation so go back so if you remember you know from your previous years uh, what we can uh, represent is basically we can have the you know DC component if there is an offset or something like that and basically we can uh, represent all those waveforms with addition of sines and cosines and of course that one goes from the fundamental component uh, to the you know, infinite uh, frequency for both cosines and sines and actually you can you know get confused by uh, cosines and sines but it just moves the, our waveform uh, in the parallel to the horizontal axis so we will see you know a couple of simplifications for the waveforms this is a really general term and you can represent every waveform but most of the time we will be dealing with uh, symmetrical uh, AC signals and there are some uh, simplifications over that Fourier series but before that uh, let's talk about how we can uh, calculate those coefficients Fourier coefficient so ba basically the idea is for that uh, frequency for that frequency I mean, this is the uh, fundamental uh, sorry offset DC offset so it's you just integrate it from minus pi to pi and you take the average so it is basically how we calculate the average voltage and for any other components you get the original function that you are trying to represent and you multiply it with a cosine and then you take the integral for that one and for higher frequency harmonics for uh, for example a third harmonic you are not multiplying by a cosine omega t but you are multiplying with cosine 3 omega t so for bn basically uh, it is the same for multiplication with sine waveforms so let's uh, have a look at how we can simplify and how we can get rid of uh, some of those uh, coefficients so here these are uh, some important rules to remember and actually if you just uh, do it yourself you will see why they are like that so what we call an even function even not even harmonics don't confuse with even harmonics I am talking about the uh, function itself an even function is symmetrical along the vertical axis if you have let's say this is your time axis so you can have some waveforms here and actually if this is I don't know if I can draw the same waveform anyway but if any of that point at t is equal to the any point at minus t 
one for example then you can say this is an even function so even functions are symmetrical around the vertical uh, t is equal to zero axis okay and for that waveforms basically you can get rid of all bh components so for that one all those sine components you know will be equal to zero okay and actually you can uh, calculate it yourself if your, your function is symmetrical you are multiplying with a you know sine function and this is positive this is negative here so they cancel each other and you get an integral of zero for those bn values in other words other you know symmetrical of that one is to have an odd function and in the odd function you have the inverse of that signal so if you have a, so a waveform like that so any value that you have is the negative value of that one if you have that kind of symmetry so it is you know the let's say quadrature uh, so quadrature one and three so you have a symmetry between these two areas so in this case you have coefficients of a are equal to zero so in the if I go back so let me get rid of uh, those values so if you have any symmetry like I mentioned basically if you multiply it with the cosine term so cosine is a waveform remember like that so you are actually taking positive and this one is positive so the sign is not changing but the function itself is you know negative and that range so basically they cancel each other so I mean depending on the uh, phase of your uh, waveforms if it is more or less starting here or if it is like a cosine signal you either have the BH or AH functions and actually since all of our functions are uh, symmetrical and continuous signals actually we are not really that interested in what is AH or BH what we are interested in is what are the specific uh, harmonics harmonic components in this e AH or BH and this uh, adds more uh, on those ones if you have a half wave symmetry half wave symmetry so that means your signal repeats itself but in negative ones at t over 2 so in other words if you have let's say a classic you know waveform like that so this is our uh, t and that part is symmetrical over that one but with the negative sign so if this is positive this is negative and it is the same for a square waveform blah blah in other words if your waveform doesn't have any offset okay if it doesn't have any DC component and if it is symmetrical over the positive range and negative range so you have a half wave symmetry and if you have a half wave symmetry both AH and BH are 0 for even harmonics so this is the case for pure AC signals if you have a pure AC signal that means you have no DC offset so if you integrate that area and if you integrate that area they will cancel each other so in this case basically you don't have no even harmonics so that is the reason you, know, you can uh, calculate it yourselves that is the reason why we just have the first third you know fifth seventh harmonics in a square waveform but not the you know second fourth and other even harmonics and on top of that uh, there's you know more symmetry it is called quarter wave even symmetry so it needs to be even function and half wave symmetry so it is the same thing with the other one so you have again you know BH is equal to zero for all harmonics so you don't have any BH components and 
AH is 0 for even harmonic. So what is a even function and half wave symmetry? So even function is if your waveform, let's say starting like that, and it's going like that. So it is symmetrical, it is symmetrical along that vertical axis. So it is uh, satisfying what you have an even function and it is it has a half wave symmetry because it repeats itself like uh, with the negative value so that one and that one so it just repeats itself so it has uh, the half wave symmetry so you don't have any BH harmonics for that one and you don't have any EH uh, coefficients for even harmonics so you only have A1, A3, A5 and so on okay so let me uh, try to uh, go back and just give you an idea about the calculations of these waveforms and again you, know, you can calculate them using trigonometric functions and that is fine but most of the time in this course you know it is more important to have some kind of uh, insight on those on those uh, figures geometrically so Let's say uh, I have I have a square wave like that. Let me draw it properly. Okay, let me use the red pen. So let's say you have a square wave, and actually it's not really important where you start it but I am just starting it through here so we can have uh, more symmetry through that line okay let's say this is one this is minus one so basically if you want to calculate a0 a0 is integral of uh, that waveform from uh, minus pi to pi and you can quickly calculate you know that one is basically uh, zero there is no offset and second let's calculate the first component so the first component is the multiplication of that waveform okay the multiplication of that waveform let me draw here again so consistent with the colors you have the square waveform and you are multiplying it with a sinusoidal value a cosine value right so basically if you multiply that one that is positive here that is negative here and you multiply a positive waveform with a positive square you get positive value you get negative values of the cosine and you multiply with the function itself which is negative so you get a positive waveform so you have you know, that value and that value and that value I mean, I'm not getting into details of actual calculations of those coefficients but you can say all those parts are positive under the orange one so I can say a1 should be larger than 0 right <clears throat> and let's now look at what will be the case if I multiply that one with a sine waveform let me uh, erase those things okay so now I'm going to uh, multiply that waveform Draw again so that is my waveform I'm going to multiply it with a sinusoidal signal so sine starts here reaches the maximum value through here and it goes like that it goes like that so that part is you know this is positive this is positive the same and this is positive 
this is negative it will stay like that and that part is negative here so it will be multiplied by uh, the square wave itself so let me try to draw it so that part will be identical up to here okay and that part is inverse so that will be inverse like that and that part is inverse like that and actually you can uh, take the integral for that one and you can see that area and that area will cancel each other so I can say Bn or let me say B1 should be 0 so it, this waveform due to our you know full of thumbs actually only have a n components so let me uh, look at the second order okay let me look at the uh, second order uh, not the sine but for the uh, cosine I have the square waveform and I'm going to multiply remember now I am trying to calculate the second order uh, second coefficient of the Fourier series for a square waveform so I need to multiply it with not the cosine omega t but cosine 2 omega t so let me try to draw the second uh, frequency so in the previous one remember uh, the waveform was something like that but now it will be the twice of the frequency so instead of uh, reaching down here okay so I will reach down at the half of our waveform so it will be something like that right so if you multiply that one with the square wave it will be the same function and here it will be rectified but that area now positive and the other one is negative so let me draw here so that area is positive positive that is a negative area this is a negative area so basically if you calculate the second order harmonic 1 over pi minus pi to pi uh, fx is our cosine uh, sorry square wave and if you multiply it by cosine 2x dx you will get a zero area because of that multiplication so that is why in pure AC systems you will have all that kind of properties you can uh, try it yourself uh, for different uh, square waveforms and you will have the same waveforms maybe you were confused why I started my uh, square waveform here but not uh, through the origin if you had drove If you had drawn your square waveform like that, okay. So actually, from the frequency point of view, nothing will change. So this is our zero. So the only difference will be in this one. I will have all the a n's will be zero, but I will have b n's will be larger than zero and it will be the same for one third fifth and seventh harmonics so you know, it is important to get an understanding for all uh, those uh, rule of thumbs and again you don't have to make your calculations trigonometrically taking all the integrals and that thing it is usually simpler uh, just plotting the waveform and think what will happen uh, if I multiply that signal with uh, cosine or sine. Okay, thank you.